What's up, everybody? It's Chris Evans here. Listen, today is the day. Now is the time. It is your opportunity to get the smoking deals that we have lined up for you. So here's what you need to do. You need to go ahead and there should be a link around here. Click on it and go get the amazing deals that we have lined up for you. But if you wait, then you might miss out. So don't wait. Do not delay. Go ahead and grab the deals that we have for you. These are the best deals that we've ever put for our products ever, ever. And now is your time. Go grab it. You're listening to the Traffic and Funnel Show. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everybody's doing well. It's an amazing season. I always say that, but it's so true. Like if you really learn to look at your life in the frame of seeing problems as opportunities, every week is amazing. There's always something to overcome. There's always a new opportunity to tackle. There's always a new mountain that you're getting closer and closer to the top. And if you're new here, welcome, first of all. But if you're new here, you'll notice that there's almost a little a, a cultish mindset around pressure, challenge, and problems. And we thirst for them. We hunger for them because when you solve problems, you are rewarded with progress. Solving problems, there is a reward to solving problems and it's called progress. In fact, Ray Dalio, who has the largest hedge fund in the world, uh, Ray Dalio is a hedge fund manager, investor, all of these things. He says, problems are like the uh, the coals on those old trains that you throw into the furnace, and in doing so, the coal burns and you get power. Problems are like that. The more you solve, the more power you get. And I thought that's awesome. That's so true. Everybody's afraid of problems. Everybody's terrified of problems, but what you don't realize is that without problems, we don't have any progress. The greatest inventions come from problems. So no matter where you're at, if you're just getting started, uh, you're wondering, why is this so hard? Why is there so much work to do? Engage and enjoy the problems and you will grow from them. All right, so let's get into the lesson for today. Uh, we're talking about espresso. Somebody say espresso. <sighs> By the way, you notice me in my gym clothes here because uh, I am in, I, As while you're watching this, I am in Charlotte meeting with our team and uh, preparing for Upper Echelon. And so I'm in Charlotte right now. I'm not even, <laughs> this is recorded. This isn't even live. And I actually just came from the gym and I got really inspired and motivated and wanted to record this for you. Uh, so forget what I look like and just put, you know, focus on the content. Uh, but we're talking about espresso. And it's gonna be a really good lesson because I just got a new espresso machine. Chris has been trying to get me to get this freaking espresso machine for like almost actually over a year since before he got into uh, his new mansion, man, uh, Evans Manor. And I got this new espresso machine. It's a barista, or it's a uh, Breville Barista Express or something. And uh, I'm basically becoming like a pro barista. No big deal. I'm just like becoming really, really good. You know, typical Taylor Welch fashion. I'm just learning really, really quick and becoming better than Chris is, even though Chris has had way more practice. That's kind of how we do. And uh, literally, I'm like pulling shots every day. It's the best. I love it. It's like, it's therapeutic because you got to actually like grind the beans and then put the thing in. And it's just therapeutic. I just am falling in love with it. And uh, it's really fun when people come over and I show them this machine and I start making them espresso and they're like really impressed with me. They don't forget the three Teslas outside in the NSX. They just want the espresso machine. Uh, but let me take you back to a couple weeks ago when this espresso machine first came in and I first learned how to use it. And there's this giant meter on the front of it and it's got like a bar um, that basically tells you what the pressure is on the machine. So there's a pressure meter. And it is the key to pulling the perfect shot of espresso, okay? It is the master key. How much pressure and how that barometer works is uh, if it's at the very, very bottom, it, you know, there's like a range. If it's at the very bottom, it's not even espresso. And if it's way up at the top, then there's barely anything that comes out. And the goal is to get the pressure just right, inside of this little zone, in this, this gray zone that you try to keep it in. Too much pressure means that the espresso is gonna be really, really, really bitter. It's gonna taste nasty. And too little pressure means the espresso is gonna be what they call under extracted. 
So you got under extracted espresso and it won't have any flavor. It'd just be like colored water. Okay. So how do you get the perfect shot of espresso? You get that you get that pressure meter right in the middle. And the way you do that is there are two levers that you can pull. You can either increase the amount of grinds, so how many grinds are actually in the cup, or you can change the texture, so how fine, how fine the grounds are you ground up. I don't know the I lied to you, I'm not actually a barista. I don't know what the right term is or anything like that. I'm self-taught. I'm a self-taught barista, okay? Anyways, more grinds, so more volume increases the pressure. And the finer the grinds increases the pressure. I do know that because I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on this. And so you have these two levers that you can play with. And you can manipulate that little pressure bar to get right in the middle with the volume, how much is in there, and then the, the texture, how fine it is or how thick or whatever. And when you master this, you can have the perfect cup of espresso anytime, day or night, anytime you want. It's the best in the world. It's amazing. It's so fun. So it took me literally like 10 tries. And I called Zach and I called Chris and I was like, how do you change the pressure? Because the first couple of times the pressure was too low, then it was way too high. And it took me like 10 tries, you know, pulling just espresso and literally throwing it out because it's disgusting. And, uh, you know, eventually kind of figured it out that, you know, um, my meters were like all screwed up and uh, the volume was just like, it was actually almost all the way to the top and then the, the the thing on the side, but I didn't actually understand like how to make it. So I'm uh, I'm testing them, pulling a shot, throwing it out, changing a little bit on the front, changing a little bit on the side, pulling a shot, throwing it out. And um, basically what happens and how this works, not that you really care, but this is just going to be pertinent to the lesson at the end of the story, is if the grinds are too fine, okay, so... If they are like really, really fine, if you have the 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 uh, um, you know whatever it is on the side that controls how fine the texture is, if you have it all the way up, the there's not enough room for the water to make it through the different the the ground coffee, and you get a little bit of water and it's super 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 bitter, super bitter because there's not enough water to to make it through because there's not enough room. That's really really high pressure, and then if the grinds are too big, there's too much room, and the water just shoots right through it and it doesn't extract all of the flavor. So you just get like brown water, okay? And then the volume is self-explanatory. Like if there's no grind, if there's not a lot of coffee in there, then it's obviously uh, the pressure can be too low because there's not enough. If it's too high, that's self-explanatory. So finally I get it right in the middle and I call Lindsay in and I make her one. And she's like, this is amazing, babe. You're so awesome. I'm so, you know, so proud of you. I'm like, I'm a barista. Uh, and it's amazing. And I don't have to change anything about it. And that's the beauty of this machine is it's just perfect. Once you figure it out and dial it in, you just – every single day you can make a shot of espresso until this. I got new coffee. The Chris told me, he said, bro, this is my favorite coffee ever. You got to try this coffee. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. So got in the mail. I ordered it online, put it in the uh, hopper on the top. And all of a sudden, literally, I pulled a shot of espresso and my pressure meter didn't work. It was like way too low and I had to mess with it again. It was way too high. And I was like, what the? And I learned that the type of coffee determines you have to retune. You have to recalibrate the machine. And so I go through the pit the valley of the shadow of death back to my pre-master barista days and I have to like tune everything and trial and error it again it's just the worst and I get it right and it's perfect again and balance is restored to the universe and the animals are happy and everything's great as it should be now I know for next time that anytime you get new coffee you're gonna have to recalibrate okay so what does this have to do with Client kit. What does this have to do with business? What does this have to do with your life in general? Here's what it has to do. In today's lesson titled, is this. Pressure is your barometer. Pressure is your barometer. This is so pertinent to whatever industry you're in, whatever business you're building, because the inability 
to understand your zone, where your ideal pressure meter should be, has taken more business people out of the game probably, I would say probably, I'm just thinking about to make sure this is accurate. Well, I'll rephrase it this way. I've observed time and time again that a person's cap on what they're able to achieve, a person's lid on how high they are able to fly, is their ability to withstand pressure and ultimately understand where they are in the in the meter. Pressure is your barometer. How you handle pressure determines so many things. And the world is running rampant. This is an epidemic with people who talk a huge game and they say, I want what they have. I want what this person has. And they have these huge aspirations and things on their morning formula that are motivating and big. They want to provide things for their family that their family has never provided for them. And they get a first bit of pressure, instant quitter. Takes them instantly out of the game. You want the big house and you want the security and you want the safety and you want the millions of success stories. And you thought you were going to get that without paying for it. You thought you were going to get that without going through a little bit of pressure. No. And the hardest part about this for me and for Chris is I kind of get it. I can see it from their point of view. And this isn't the lesson. I'm just going off on a tangent right now because I can understand why someone would get caught in this pressure zone and say, you know what? I got to tap out because three months ago, I didn't feel this way. And we flee back to the most recent time we can remember that we felt safe. I was talking to a guy last week. He's like, I want to I want to do this in my business, and it's a great idea, and it's playing at the next level. But he's like, I just feel scared. I'm like, oh, do you? I feel scared every freaking day. Here's the deal. If you don't feel a little bit of fear, you have sh- goals, and your life isn't probably anywhere near your full maxed out potential. You are never going to arrive at a place where you feel zero fear. You're never going to arrive at a place where you feel zero pressure. It is the barometer. Just like you can try to pull a shot of espresso, huh? but without any pressure, there isn't any flavor. And without any pressure in your business, without any pressure in your life, you're not going to have the reality that you have up here that you want to be out there. I hope this is making sense. And I can understand why someone would get tempted and lulled into this place of thinking, you know what, three months ago, you know, I didn't have this bill coming up with with CK or whatever, and I didn't have this, and and I'm just gonna flee back to whatever is was safe. And in doing so, you sacrifice the years of potential, the years of latent potential stored up inside of you, because you set that pattern into motion. And then all of a sudden, it becomes a pattern that takes you to 80 years old, 90 years old, the end of your life. Looking back, everything you ever did was from a place of safety. I want to feel safe. I don't want to feel pressure. I don't want to feel problems. I don't want to feel pain. And in doing so, you let go of the person you were supposed to be, the people you were supposed to impact, the family experience you were supposed to create. Human beings, we're like... We're not wired to to seek out pressure. We're not wired to love this stuff. We actually, we're kind of wired for self-preservation. What's interesting though, is they've done studies on this and it's like human beings need a little bit of pressure. We just like freaking die. We get depressed. I told that story about uh, the barracuda and the fish and everything. If you're around, maybe you, you remember this. If not, go back to an old Mindset Monday. You can see the archives about these fish were just dying when they had no natural predators because there was no reason to swim around. There was no, they would just literally sit there, go into comatose and die. This, this biochemist or whatever figured out you need a reason to survive. And without a reason, without a problem, we are just kind of going to this place where we don't know what we're doing. We don't know what we're here for. So we're actually wired to not be able to live without pressure. But for the most part, nobody recognizes this. Normal people don't recognize this. And so we don't play to it. Hey, crew, what up? Taylor Welch here. Have you ever wondered how traffic and funnels grew so fast? I mean, 
four years ago, the company was nothing. Nobody knew who we were. We didn't have any revenue, no clients, no products, no content. And we noticed really quickly that we had something special, but it's not just that Chris and Taylor are special. There are processes, recipes, concepts, materials, foundational strategies that have allowed us to go from zero to eight figures in about three and a half years. And one of the things we do that's really cool and I think it's really fun for a lot of our clients is we publish our learning lessons every single month. It's about eight to 10 pages. In fact, the most recent one was a little bit longer. We talk about how to hire, how to find people, how to run advertising, our recent marketing tactics, some of our strategies for sales. We cover every element of how to grow a healthy, predictable, successful, and most importantly, growing client business. And people rave about this. We've got almost 6,000 people subscribed to this every single month. And we'll actually ship it to you in your office, your home, wherever you tell us to ship it to you. And every single month, we include some extra perks to it. Sometimes audio content, sometimes some video content. It's one of the best programs that you can be in, I think, in the world if you run a client business. And the best part is it's very, very affordable. We've tried to price this at a level that anybody can be a part of it who needs it and who wants it. So you can check it out at trafficandfunnels.com slash I-A-M, I-A-M, basically Insiders Access Monthly, I-A-M, trafficandfunnels.com slash I-A-M. We'll send you out the first package as soon as you hop in. And I'm telling you, this is one of the most fantastic ways that you can learn from the mistakes and the growth curves of other people. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Talk soon. Back to the story of the espresso. A couple things about pressure. Is this okay? Also, if there's anything in particular that you would like us to talk about on these Mindset Mondays, you know you can always submit those. And uh, I saw that Kev uh, last week or something posted about how to deal with overwhelm in some some form or another. And so we're going to add that to the list. But anytime you want us to talk about something in particular, let me know. But like pulling the perfect shot of espresso, okay? Keep the analogy in check. You're only going to achieve your ideal, your optimal potential when you are experiencing pressure, all right? Three things that pressure does for you. Three things that pressure does for you. Three things that pressure does for you. Number one, pressure crystallizes. Crystallizes. What is soft, it makes hard. It tempers, it crystallizes, it creates a a wall that you can use to protect yourself against adversity. That comes from pressure. I'm amazed looking back at my life, how the times that I withstood the most intense pressure gave me the greatest gifts and developed in me the greatest skills and the best philosophies. I feel sorry for the person who's never been through anything challenging because they're soft and they don't have You look at like Elon Musk and people think he's a god and how does he deal with this? But when you look at his life, he experienced nothing but painful pressure from a young age. And then his first real company was taken from him. And then his second real company, on the eve of going bankrupt, he had to inject it with his own money. He's gone through problem after problem after problem after problem. Is it any wonder that he has a formidable shield around him that no problem is going to take him out of the game? And when you have the ability to, to, to survive a barrage of setbacks, a barrage of problems, and you're able to take what is broken and bring order to it, that comes from pressure. That's why part of part of the process here, this is what I love about CK, is it's not just it's not just marketing, it's like cognitive reprogramming because there's a way to wire yourself mentally so that things that kick normal people out of the game don't kick you out of the game. It's up here. First comes how you think, then comes what you do. You can use these two together. Pressure crystallizes. Is this making sense? Number two, pressure extracts. It extracts. It crystallizes. That's number one. Think of the espresso. It just pushes down. It makes it hard. And it makes you able to withstand pressure and setback and all of those things. Number two, it extracts greatness. 
from you. The greatest contributors of the ages, if you go back and you look at their lives, they were intimately connected with pressure and pain. I'm not saying that you should try to make your life as painful as possible, but I am saying you definitely shouldn't idolize comfort. You definitely shouldn't set your life up so there's no pressure because then you're going to be under extracted, under extracted. There's going to be greatness locked up inside of you that never got a chance to come out and to show other people. Pressure extracts greatness. The two, two people come to mind, Abraham Lincoln, you look at Abraham Lincoln, uh, one of the famous presidents of the United States went through something like 28 severe setbacks before becoming president. He lost children. He lost wives. Setback after setback after setback. You look at Nelson Mandela, who was arguably one of the greatest minds uh, in the last hundred years, who brought freedom and pushed off the apartheid in Africa. Nelson Mandela withstood prison. He withstood hate, death threats. He was beaten. The man who said, I am a captain of my fate. I never lose. I either win or I learn. Nelson Mandela, he was familiar with pain and pressure, and he was one of the greatest men who's ever lived. There are not people at the top that haven't experienced pressure because that's not possible. Pressure extracts greatness from you. Don't run away from pressure. Don't run away from pain or fear or anything. Learn to get comfortable with pressure because it makes you better. It makes you stronger. It makes you who you are. Pressure crystallizes. Pressure extracts greatness. Number three, pressure will be your guide. Pressure will be your guide. It's amazing to me. I was having a conversation with uh, the masterful Ben McClella the other day, and we were talking about just the changes and the innovation. And, you know, it's crazy. Like, people see us, and uh, we just had a job interview last week with somebody who wants to work here. And she's like, You guys are leading the pack in terms of how content is pushed out and distributed and client results and all those things. And you're constantly innovating. And, Stuff like that is good to hear, but it doesn't it doesn't make me feel any different. Uh, what I love to see is I love to see the greatness coming out of you, coming out of this group, and coming out of our clients. And you got people who are just amazing. It's the best and greatest feeling of all time. But I was telling Ben, we're moving over to some new platforms, and if you're an elite, you've been added to that, and like workplace and stuff. And it's just hard because it's so our team is used to one thing and we're moving over to a new thing and we're actually transitioning from pipe drive to HubSpot and some different things. And it's just like hard. It's like technically challenging. And ben got on this call and it's like eyes are glazed over and he's like seeing stars. And I'm like, hey, you know, you're good. Like lock in with me. But I made this comment to him. I was like, dude, I was doing this work and I was moving some stuff over. And in the back of my head, I was like, why are we doing this? Why? Like, what's the point? Like, things are working fine the way they are. We're already the best. Like, we already have the coolest clients. We already have what I think is the best training and uh, guaranteed the longest list of case studies. Like, we already have all that. Why are we moving over? And then there was a, a second voice that popped in, a little bit quieter, and said, the path of least resistance is not the path of greatness. Sometimes you just think things, it's like, there's like something you want so bad and then like your spirit like rises up. It's like the path of least resistance is not the path of greatness. The path of least resistance is not the path of greatness. And if you pay attention, what you'll notice is that you have a map set before you. And people always discount feelings. And the thing is, it's like I'm all about, I'm all about discounting certain feelings. If you're going for a goal and you don't feel like you just do it, do your shit, do your work. It doesn't matter what you feel about it. But on a macro level, the way you feel is important because your emotions are not unimportant. They are distinctive. They kind of tend to guide you. And uh, we, we even, we roll up off of intuition all the time. Um, but running from pressure will lead you right off a cliff. Right off a cliff. Because the path of least resistance 
doesn't lead to greatness. What things that hurt us instruct us. I've told stories about this before, but if you want the recipe for living at the bottom, if you want the recipe for having zero impact, zero contribution, zero fulfillment, run away from resistance and run away from pressure. Wherever we experience pressure, it's a good sign that we're on a path towards a good destination. And if you can learn to change and reframe the way you view pressure, pressure will guide you to the place where you will have the most impact. You will have the most contribution. Pressure crystallizes. Pressure extracts. Pressure instructs. Guides. Okay? So there's only two types of people. There's only two types of scenarios you can be in. One, you can be in a place where there's zero pressure and you're like, life is good. I don't have anything to worry about in the world. The other, you could be like half dead, like I'm dying, I'm tapping out, there's too much pressure, like there's too much pressure, there's too much pressure, there's too much pressure. So let me speak to you both. Number one, if you're in a place where there's too much pressure and you're like getting bitter, you know, like like if there's too much pressure on the espresso meter, like you're going to have bitter espresso and you're starting to get bitter, like angry, why is this happening? Here's what you need to do. You need to go micro. You need to go micro and you need to create momentum in little bitty areas of your life. Can I wake up 30 minutes earlier? Boom, do it, prove it to yourself, honor that commitment that you made with yourself and watch the momentum begin to take shape and bleed into the other areas of your life. Here's the problem. When people get this overwhelmed feeling and they're like, I don't don't know what to do. It's because they're looking at like all of the whole world of their options and they're not getting micro enough. What areas can I win? What can I win? Can I eat better for lunch? Can I have a, can I post once a day? Can I do one post a day? That's my only goal this week is to do one post a day. Let me tell you, if you're feeling pressure, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're like too much, if it's too much pressure and you're getting angry at the whole freaking world, you need to go micro and you need to start winning in the little areas because winning in little areas turns into big areas. Little things produce little momentum, which compounds into big momentum. Do you understand that? Stop trying to build a $100,000 business right now. You're about to die. So you need to like wake up 10 minutes earlier and produce a little bit of momentum that turns into big momentum. Is this making sense? Number two, if you're in a place where there's no pressure, you're feeling good, good in the hood, fine and dandy, everything's perfect, no fear. You need to dial up. Dial up the pressure. You need to get into the big picture because I guarantee you if you feel nothing, if you are flatlined on how pressured you feel, you are undercutting your potential by a lot. A lot. We can talk about this for like an hour because I'm passionate about it, but I got to go. But here's the thing. Pressure is a barometer. Too much pressure isn't good. Okay? Okay. Is not enough pressure isn't good. You want to be ideal. We call this optimal, optimal. And every time me and Chris get into a position where we're just feeling real good, real, like there's nothing that could bother us, nothing that I, I just think that this is a this is a character trait of us that has allowed us to grow so fast. You look at us in like three years, but the you know we'll, we'll cross over eight figures in probably the next six months. Why? How? It's because of this. We don't ever stay in a place where there's no pressure for more than a week, more than two weeks. We're always dialing things up, figuring out how, how we can make it better. The path of least resistance is not the path of greatness. And no matter where you're at, whether you're feeling a little bit too much pressure or not enough pressure, the good news is, is you can always change the dials and you can go micro and you can win at the little things or you can go big and you can say, look, I'm about more. My life is about more. I have more potential than this. The choice is yours, my friends. And uh, I hope this helps you today. Three things that pressure does. It crystallizes, it extracts, and it instructs. Three things that pressure does. Don't be afraid of the pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Give me some more pressure. Pressure turns into power. Give me all the pressure I can handle. You guys are amazing. Have a great Monday. And uh, if you're in UWE, I will see you in a few hours. Y'all are great. See ya. Thanks for listening. For more from Chris and Taylor, visit trafficandfunnels.com and get a free gift just for being a subscriber. That's trafficandfunnels.com.